What's up, folks? I'm Chris, your NFL writer here at Occupy Fantasy, here with a quick look at Week 17's giant 13-game main slate. No more bye weeks the rest of the way here. We've got nine games in the early window, four games in the late window here to navigate. And we also have some motivations that we need to take into account. Teams that are not necessarily playing for much anymore because their seasons are virtually over. But there is still pride and paychecks on the line for all of these players. So there are a lot of things that we can use to make decisions. This week, Christian McCaffrey of the San Francisco 49ers is our favorite play on the board. Not just because of who he is as a running back, we all know at this point, but because the 49ers are favored by eight and a half points here in betting markets against the Las Vegas Raiders, who have somewhat made the decision to punt off these final two games of the regular season with their decision to bench Derek Carr. So McCaffrey has seen over 80% of the snaps on average over the last four weeks of play, has seen over 16 touches each and every week, and he has a great matchup here. The 49ers have the fifth best run blocking line in the game right now facing a well below average rush defense and the worst defense defending running backs in the passing game in the NFL on the year. So fire up Christian McCaffrey as your RB1 in all low risk contests and quite frankly, find a way to play him in some of your other lineups this week as well. Normal agenda of the show, as always, we like to go through the biggest favorites on the board and see what that means for their running backs. Uh, teams that are favored by a lot of points in betting markets likely will win their games this weekend, and that means that the running backs will be in favorable game scripts to perform. As has been the case for pretty much the entire month of December, the Kansas City Chiefs are giant favorites once again here in Week 17, favored by 12.5 in their matchup at home with the Denver Broncos, and that means we have to be mindful of the split backfield with Isaiah Pacheco on early downs and Jarek McKinnon on passing downs in the Kansas City Chiefs backfield. It doesn't look like either of these running backs will actually be popular this week, so we're looking at some pretty good high-risk plays, I would say, with each of Pacheco and McKinnon against the Broncos. And with McKinnon's role going somewhat back to normal last week against the Seahawks, uh, just five rush attempts and three targets, I think I would lean towards playing more Isaiah Pacheco, who had his normal allotment of roughly 15 carries two or three targets in the passing game. He's probably the safer play against the Broncos if the Chiefs end up running away with this one, as most of us expect to happen. Austin Eckler with the Los Angeles Chargers. This game is only available on DraftKings because it was originally supposed to be Sunday Night Football. It was flexed out and Ravens Steelers was flexed in. Those of you playing over on FanDuel, FanDuel decided to leave the Ravens-Steelers game on the main slate and not add the Chargers game, so uh, that's something to be aware of if you're building lineups over on FanDuel this weekend. But Austin Eckler, 8,500 here for the Los Angeles Chargers against the Rams, favored by 6.5 points here in what is a home game, essentially, for both sides. Big weakness here with Eckler. The Chargers have well below average run blocking. They're 24th in the league, and this is an above-average rush defense from the Rams. Uh, but a average matchup in the passing game. Austin Eckler's targets have not been the same since Keenan Allen has returned, so that's the biggest thing to be aware of, but still getting the touches near the goal line, as you can see by all of the rushing touchdowns, he has been accumulating nonetheless. So, kind of like Eckler in high-risk contests this week, as he is not amongst the most popular group for low-risk contests. Now, the Detroit Lions have the highest implied team total this week in their date with the Chicago Bears. They are at home, and we also have their third running back, Justin Jackson, questionable to play on Sunday. If Jackson misses this game, that's great news for Jamal Williams, who will handle the bulk of the work in the backfield, uh, but won't necessarily get work in the air. That work will go to DeAndre Swift, who has seen uh, his target totals go up in recent weeks. He has seen his rush attempts be reasonable, but really the way to think about this is somewhat like that Chiefs situation. Jamal Williams is going to be the Isaiah Pacheco here for the Lions, as he has been all year. He'll run on early downs, he'll get the work near the goal line if they're inside the five for some carries for some touchdowns, and with the highest implied team total on the board, at just $5,000 here on DraftKings and modestly priced over on FanDuel, Jamal Williams is probably one of the best high-risk running backs you can consider at a cheap price particularly if you are going with the touchdowns going on the ground and not through the air as some leverage off of some popular Detroit plays that I'll talk about in a second. Swift, obviously also right up there with his role in the passing game. Other big favorite on this slate are the Philadelphia Eagles. They are favored by five and a half points at home against the New Orleans Saints. 
excellent news for Miles Sanders that Jalen Hurts is not playing because that means his opportunities to touch the football have skyrocketed. He had 21 of the 25 running back carries in Week 16 against the Dallas Cowboys. Good for an astronomical share, right, of over 70% of the rush attempts. Passing game role has never really been there for Sanders this year, but we are playing him specifically for this advantageous spot against the Saints where he will see probably 20-plus carries here against a below-average rush defense with an above-average run-blocking offensive line in front of him. So Miles Sanders would be one of my other favorite plays in low-risk contests and really all contest types this week. Now, those are the big favorites on the board at running back. Our model has a couple of other guys that it has honed in on as popular this week that we need to be aware of. The Patriots are going to be hosting the Miami Dolphins here in Week 17 with their playoff hopes on the line. Patriots need to win this game to keep their chances going, and that means that it should be a healthy workload for Ramondre Stevenson, who is modestly priced this week, questionable after getting three limited practices in on his ankle that he injured a couple of weeks back, but I would expect Stevenson to still play his full complement of snaps here against the Dolphins, who are playing backup quarterback Teddy Bridgewater this week, which may lead to some more inefficiency on the Miami side and therefore some more efficiency on the New England side, right? Stevenson has roughly average run blocking in front of him with the Patriots offensive line. This is an above average run defense, though, from the Dolphins. And the other thing that may be a problem for Stevenson is that Damian Harris has no injury designation, got a full practice on Friday, and looks like he's finally ready to resume uh, his role that he had in this offense. Earlier in the year, we see week two through four, he had roughly 15 carries per game on average, was still playing somewhat of a second fiddle to Stevenson at that time, but I really wonder if Bill Belichick wants to get back to this versus just keeping Stevenson in the role that he is in. That would be the one worry I would have with playing Ramondre Stevenson come Sunday. Other running back that projects to be very popular up here in the uh, cheap price range that I'm really interested in and I think will go up in popularity by the time we get to lock tomorrow, is Washington commander running back Brian Robinson Jr. Antonio Gibson is out this week, so that means there's really nothing uh, affecting Robinson's ability to get the majority of the touches, not just in the backfield, but also in the passing game here for the commanders against the Cleveland Browns, who are a below-average rush defense and a below-average defense against the running back in the passing game. So at just 5,200 here on DraftKings, modestly priced over on FanDuel as well. I really like Brian Robinson as the other running back that you should use in low risk contests. I would move some things around here, play Robinson at an actual running back spot, and then I would get McCaffrey in as your flex, given that San Francisco plays in the late window. There are only three games on the slate this week with a total above 45 points in betting markets. That would be the Chiefs and the Broncos at 45 points, uh, the Vikings and the Packers at 47 and a half, and the Lions and the Bears at 52 and a half points, according to our partner Sportsbooks. That means that the most popular quarterback on this slate, low risk, high risk, is going to be Jared Goff with the Detroit Lions. Given that Detroit is the favorite side here, the Lions have the highest implied team total on the week. I would expect Goff to be utilized heavily in low risk because he's very affordable, but also in high risk given the expectation that this is a higher scoring game environment. And that means that we are also likely to be playing Amon Ra St. Brown with Jared Goff because of his astronomical role in the passing game. Sees about 30% of the targets from Jared Goff, and there is absolutely no reason this late in the season to expect any different. So in lowers contest this week, in addition to these running backs that I like, I do like this Goff and Amon Ra St. Brown uh, 2-0 stack. I think that's pretty much how the field is going to be building it anyway. And then obviously there's some high risk appeal here as well because just run a 2-0 stack in high risk contests. We can add another lion receiver. We can add a bear bring back and have a really nice game stack opportunity here with the highest total game on the board. Now for defenses here on DraftKings, the 49ers are priced at just $2,900 as the road team here. But given all of the chaos going on with the Raiders, we're going to see the 49ers be the most popular play at the position. So in low risk contest, it does make sense to try to find your way to playing the 49ers. However, with all of the backup quarterbacks that are playing this week, there are some other spots that I think are important to consider. The Patriots are slight favorites at home. They're cheaper than the 49ers. They have a pretty good defense this year as well, facing Teddy Bridgewater here. And then we have the Falcons facing Arizona's fourth quarterback of the season uh, at home. They are now favored by a decent amount, uh, roughly five points. So the Falcons would make sense as well. I really don't think you can go wrong with playing any three of these defenses in your low-risk contests or high-risk contests 
this week. Looking at our model and looking at the other wide receivers that are going to be popular based off of projected ownership, obviously Amon Ross St. Brown, the number one play um, by DraftKings projected ownership, by FanDuel projected ownership, 24 and 27% respectively in the model. We've got Garrett Wilson with the New York Jets at a modest price on DraftKings. Justin Jefferson, who has been absolutely tearing it up, will be popular once again despite the high price tag. Keenan Allen makes sense on DraftKings where you can play him at $7,000 with double-digit targets week after week after week. It might be hard with just 45, 33 remaining to get to Keenan Allen in this particular build that I have here, but I would not laugh at any Keenan Allen lineups looking at <laughs> nine plus targets in, three, in each of the last four weeks and 14 targets in three of those four games. Like Keenan Allen is going to have the volume here against the Rams defense. Other wide receivers that I like that are at the lower end this week Alan Lazard with the Green Bay Packers should be a little bit more popular than he is. Christian Watson is questionable with a hip injury, and I feel like he's on the wrong side of questionable. So if he's ruled out, Lazard would make sense to play in this price range with the Packers in one of the higher total games on the slate as well. We also have Jacoby Myers with the Patriots at just $5,000 here on DraftKings, a little bit more expensive on FanDuel. And Drake London, who has been the number one target for Desmond Ritter over the last couple of weeks, just 4900 here on DraftKings. I think he can be playable in low-risk contests as well. Over on FanDuel, I want to draw attention to this scenario here. We know that Tyler Lockett is going to play this week, and we know how good he is in this offense. Lockett is going to be 17% owned on FanDuel because they decided to price him at just $6,000, which is extremely cheap over on FanDuel. So for those of you that are playing low-risk contests on FanDuel, I think Tyler Lockett is a low-risk play specific to your contest provider this weekend. At the tight end position, it's basically Travis Kelsey or bust every week how ownership shakes out. But with all of George Kittle, TJ Hawkinson, Dallas Goddard, Tyler Higbee available, uh, there are a lot of outs here. Cole Komet and Evan Engram, Komet here in that high total environment with the Lions, uh, and really the only reliable pass weapon for Justin Fields available makes a ton of sense. Engram here, who has been leading the Jaguars in targets in recent weeks, are probably going to be the two mid-range tight ends that the field uses in their low-risk lineups. As a cheap play, looking at our model, we've got a $2,900 Tyler Conklin with the New York Jets against the Seattle Seahawks here this week that our model sees a tremendous amount of appeal with. So if you're looking for a punt play at the position this week in any contest type, I do think Tyler Conklin at tight end. The Jets have Mike White back under center this week, and Conklin will be facing the league's fourth worst uh, defense defending the tight end, according to Football Outsiders DVOA. So that's where you can probably get to Conklin. And like I said, $3,700 left to finish up a lower lineup here with a final wide receiver. Might not be enough to get there. You may need to play with the defense a little bit. We may not play Allen in this build and play a couple of other mid-range wide receivers to make it work. But that is, I think, the best way to attack low-risk contests here in Week 17. Now, in high-risk contests, as good of a play as Christian McCaffrey is, he's a little cost-prohibitive for some of the more expensive stacks that are available to us. Looking at some of the stuff that I like to consider, which is ceiling of players with concentrated volume, the Vikings and the Packers game is my favorite game to stack this week. And even though the Vikings are the underdog side against the Packers at Lambeau this weekend, the Vikings themselves are my favorite side on the board. And I think it's pretty straightforward as to why that is the case. Kirk Cousins, a mid-range price at quarterback. Justin Jefferson, the best wide receiver in the league right now, the way that he is playing. And then we have TJ Hawkinson at tight end at a modest price that we can get into our lineups. I mentioned Lazard as someone I think has low risk appeal. I do think there's a tremendous chance Christian Watson doesn't play this week. And so Lazard ends up being the true wide receiver one for the entire game. I'd like to get him in here with 40-66 per player remaining. We can play a cheap defense. Uh couple of mid-range wide receivers or another cheap running back and a cheap wide receiver. And I think this is a really good framework for a 3-1 stack, which is what we advocate for in high-risk contests in our strategy guide on OccupyFantasy.com. The more popular way that this slate is going to go is with the Lions and the Bears. You're going to see, because of pricing, Jared Goff, 5,600 is way too cheap. We're going to have Amon Ross St. Brown in there. DJ Chark would be the next most logical choice at the wide receiver position to utilize given his price and his role in the Lions offense. So you'll probably see people slot him in in 3-0 or 3-1 builds with the Lions. And then Cole Komet at tight end. 
uh, leading the Bears in target opportunities in recent weeks, and probably just their best receiving weapon in general for Justin Fields will be where people go to get a 3-1 stack going with this game. A tremendous amount of salary left because uh, we don't have someone like Justin Jefferson to worry about pricing-wise within this game. It means you can play a cheap defense. You can probably get to another expensive running back and a value-wide receiver. This is how the field is going to build it. I don't mind playing it this way, but I do prefer that that Vikings and Packers game, if I were building one lineup this week, that's probably how I would go about it, stacking the Vikings and the Packers here in Week 17. We only have one more sleep to go after this, uh, so enjoy the weekend, folks. It's going to be a good one with 13 games. We will be back next week to talk about Week 18 of the NFL regular season here on the Occupy Fantasy YouTube channel.